Well, greetings. How's everyone doing? Well, what are ionic compounds? We're going to start talking about nomenclature and naming compounds, but what are ionic compounds? We're going to focus on ionic compounds uh, initially. So what are they and how do they form? Well, some of the characteristics are that they are generally solids and many, many times they are, uh, they are white solids. I have an example here of a very common ionic compound. It is table salt. So there it is. And it is white and it is granular and uh, the crystals. They usually have very high melting points. Have you ever tried to melt salt? You can dissolve salt easily, but you cannot melt it. They also conduct electricity. Official here, I wear my goggles, and they conduct electricity very simply by dissolving that salt in water. Notice, I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. Notice that this is distilled water. It does not conduct electricity. However, here I have dissolved some salt water. And voila, it conducts electricity beautifully. Put this to the side. All right, so here we have the periodic table. I can take this off now, right? Yes. Uh, we have on the left-hand side, we have the metals. So remember the zigzag line? Right here, everything to the left are metals. All of these are metals. And to the right of the zigzag line are the nonmetals. So ionic compounds are made up of atoms. But specifically, they are made up of ions. So what are ions? Well, they're simply charged atoms. They are charged because they have number of electrons that is different from the number of protons. When you start out, an atom is neutral, meaning it has the same number of protons as it has electrons. Say five and five, five protons and five electrons. Well, what happens is that if an electron is lost, okay, let's say that's lost, okay, now I have five protons and four electrons, meaning that that would give me a positive one charge. Why? because protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. That's how ions form. So what if they gain an electron? Well, I don't have another finger to show you another one gaining an electron, but say we have say we have six electrons and six protons. And all of a sudden we gain two electrons. So we're gaining two negative charges. That means this atom has just become an ion, negative 2 in charge. A little bit more of an explanation. Here we are. We have three protons and three neutrons in the nucleus of this particular atom. We have three electrons, one, two, and three. Each electron has a negative charge. All right, going back, three neutrons, three protons. We're not going to be concerned with the neutrons because the neutrons are neutral. The protons are positively charged, and the electrons are negatively charged. So what happens if one electron is lost? Okay, we lose this electron. Boom, it's gone. Now we have, pretend it's gone. Let's go back. Here's uh, the electron that's going to be lost. So throw this electron out here somewhere, and now we have three protons and two electrons. So what is the charge? The charge is plus one because it just became positively charged. All right, so why do these ions attract? Well, opposite because they have opposite charges, these a positive ion and a negative ion attract. Who gains and who loses? Metals tend to lose electrons. They form cations. When they lose electrons, they have more protons than electrons. That means they become positively charged. Cations. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons. So when they gain electrons, they become more negatively charged, and they're called anions. So a positively charged atom is called a cation, and a negatively charged atom 
is called an anion. Who loses what? Metals tend to lose. Nonmetals tend to gain. The ones that metals lose. The charge is the result of how many electrons are lost and gained then. All right, once these two atoms, uh, one is positive, one is negative, they attract each other very much because opposites attract. So when these positive and negative come together, they form a bond, and that we call an ionic bond. So how can we tell a charge? Well, I have a positive one. All these atoms form positive one cations. All of these form positive two cations. You might want to uh, make note of this on your periodic tables. All of these, for the most part, form positive threes. These over here can be positive four. All right, so these are positive four or negative four. This column formed negative three ions. This one forms negative two ions, the one starting with oxygen. These form negative one, and these form no ions at all. All right, so keeping this in mind, you would be able to predict, well, lithium forms a plus one, and aluminum forms a plus three ion, and sulfur forms a negative two ion. Notice that the positives over here are metals, and the negatives, for the most part, are non-metals. So you can see you can easily predict what ions will be formed by metals and non-metals. There are a few exceptions to the rule that I just told you. However, let's talk about ionic bonding. What does it mean? It's the interaction or attraction between a positive and a negative ion, thus forming an ionic compound. So ionic compounds, even though the atoms making up the ionic compounds are charged, they are neutral because the electrons lost by the metal are gained by the nonmetal. So they, they equal out. They equal out in charge. They become neutral. All compounds are neutral. And ionic compounds are no exception. For now, let's just leave it at that. There's one more thing that I want to tell you about. These atoms right here in the center, these are called transition elements. These metals have a variety. They can have a variety of charges. In other words, they could possibly lose one electron, two electrons, Three electrons in some cases. So, for example, iron could lose two or three electrons, depending. Tin, uh, I'm sorry, nickel could lose uh, two electrons or three electrons. Uh, but there are a few that are fixed. We're not going to worry about these today because we're going to talk about nomenclature of these simple atoms that form from these elements and these elements. So that's ionic compounds, and soon we'll be discussing nomenclature. More later. Have a great day.